Welcome to our episode of The Automobile Brief. Today, we're diving into some intriguing developments from across the globe that are steering the future of transportation and energy. First up, we're looking at how the US might be gearing up to put the brakes on future LNG sales to China, a move that could have ripple effects on global energy politics and the ongoing tussle for dominance between these two powerhouses. Then, we'll shift gears to Australia, where the high cost of car ownership is pushing people towards more sustainable and wallet-friendly transportation alternatives. And finally, we'll charge into the electric vehicle realm, exploring how despite economic headwinds and subsidy cuts, the electric car market is revving up for an unprecedented surge, promising to reshape our roads and our environmental footprint. So buckle up and stay tuned for the detailed journey ahead. Please continue watching for more in-depth coverage. In a world where geopolitics and everyday life choices intersect in unexpected ways, recent developments have sparked discussions from the corridors of power in Washington to the quiet streets of Medicine Hat, Alberta, and bustling urban centers in Australia. Let's delve into these stories, exploring the implications of US energy policy on its relationship with China, the evolving lifestyle choices of Australians rethinking car ownership, and an unusual yet poignant running route in a Canadian cemetery. Foreign policy reports on a significant move by the U.S. Department of Energy, DOE, which announced a temporary pause on reviewing applications for exporting liquefied natural gas, LNG, to countries without a free trade agreement with the U.S. Though not explicitly stated, this decision casts a shadow over future LNG sales to China, a major importer of U.S. LNG. This pause hints at a broader strategy to mitigate risks associated with energy sales to competitor nations particularly in the context of geopolitical tensions. China, accounting for nearly a quarter of long-term U.S. LNG contract volumes, finds itself at a crossroads. The U.S.'s potential restrictions on LNG exports could drive China towards alternative suppliers like Russia, inadvertently bolstering Russian war efforts in Ukraine. Furthermore, such restrictions may hinder cooperation on environmental issues, particularly China's coal dependency. The situation underscores the delicate balance between national security concerns and the unintended consequences of limiting energy trade, suggesting a need for a nuanced approach that avoids exacerbating the burgeoning Cold War between the US and China. Meanwhile, the Sydney Morning Herald sheds light on a growing trend in Australia, where individuals are questioning the necessity of car ownership. The financial burden of maintaining a vehicle, compounded by a 20% increase in new car prices since the pandemic, has led some Australians to explore alternative modes of transportation. Cycling, public transport, and ride-hailing services are gaining popularity as more sustainable and cost-effective options. This shift not only reflects changing economic realities but also a broader societal move towards environmental consciousness and urban mobility solutions. On a more personal note, The Globe and Mail shares a unique story from Medicine Hat, Alberta, where a runner discovered an unconventional yet serene running spot, a local cemetery. Drawn by the tranquil sound of woodlarks, the runner's experience was further enriched by an unexpected encounter with an elderly woman who offered advice on his running technique. The cemetery, with its peaceful ambience and unexpected moments of connection, became a favored running location, highlighting how personal journeys and discoveries can occur in the most unanticipated places. These stories, ranging from international energy policies and urban lifestyle changes to intimate encounters in a cemetery, illustrate the complex tapestry of our contemporary world. The US's contemplation of restricting LNG exports to China underscores the intricate dance of geopolitics and global energy markets. At the same time, Australians' re-evaluation of car ownership speaks to changing societal values and the quest for sustainable living. Lastly, the runner's experience in Medicine Hat reminds us of the beauty and serendipity that can be found in the quiet moments of everyday life. Together, these narratives paint a picture of a world in flux, where decisions at the macro level resonate through the fabric of individual lives, urging us to consider the broader implications of our choices and the interconnectedness of our global community. In the ever-evolving landscape of the automotive industry, the shift towards electric vehicles, EVs, is gaining unstoppable momentum despite the economic slumps and the end of subsidies in some regions. Opel's CEO, Florian Hoodle, speaking to Yahoo US, remains optimistic about the future of electric cars. Hoodle acknowledges the current reluctance among consumers to embrace EVs, particularly in light of Germany ceasing subsidies for electric car purchases. However, he firmly believes this will merely delay, not derail, the journey towards electromobility. Opel, with its eyes set on the future, 
is preparing to exclusively offer electric vehicles in Europe by 2028 and aims to introduce an electric vehicle priced at €25,000 $26,750 in the coming years. This move underscores the industry's commitment to making electric cars more accessible and affordable to the masses. Across the pond, the UK is making headlines with a different kind of investment. According to The Telegraph, Prime Minister Boris Johnson has unveiled a £16.5 billion, $21.8 billion, boost in military spending, the largest increase in a generation. This funding will facilitate the creation of a new space command, alongside the acquisition of new ships, planes, and enhancements to the Trident nuclear program. Johnson justifies this significant expenditure as a necessary measure to counter potential threats from global adversaries such as Russia and China, as well as to bolster defenses against cyber attacks. While this move has sparked debate, with critics arguing that the funds could be better allocated to social services, it highlights the UK's prioritization of national security in an increasingly uncertain global landscape. Meanwhile, the electric vehicle market continues to surge, with the International Energy Agency, IEA, projecting a bright future. As reported by The Globe and Mail, the IEA forecasts a significant increase in electric car sales, which are expected to rise to 17 million units in 2024, up from 14 million in 2023. This growth is not just about numbers, it signifies a pivotal shift in the automotive industry that could start to erode oil demand. With electric vehicles poised to account for over one-fifth of global car sales, and China expected to lead the charge with 10 million sales, the implications for the oil industry are profound. The IEA anticipates that oil demand for road transport will peak around 2025, thanks in large part to the accelerating adoption of EVs. By adhering to current energy and climate policies, it's estimated that around 6 million barrels per day of oil demand could be eliminated by 2030, ballooning to 11 million barrels per day by 2035. However, the road ahead for electric vehicles is not without its challenges. The IEA points to affordability and the need for a robust charging infrastructure as critical factors that will shape the future growth of the EV market. With electric car sales experiencing a 25% increase in the first quarter of 2024 compared to the same period last year, the demand for charging stations is expected to grow exponentially. The agency underscores the necessity for a six-fold expansion of the charging network by 2035 to accommodate the burgeoning fleet of electric vehicles. These developments across the automotive and energy sectors underscore a global shift towards more sustainable modes of transportation and energy consumption. While challenges such as affordability and infrastructure development persist, the commitment from industry leaders and governments alike signals a promising path forward. As the world continues to grapple with environmental concerns and geopolitical tensions, the pursuit of innovation and security remains paramount. Whether it's through the electrification of the automotive industry or bolstering national defense capabilities, these efforts reflect a collective endeavor to navigate the complexities of the 21st century with resilience and foresight. In a remarkable turn of events, the world of technology and unexpected human survival stories intertwine, showcasing the resilience and innovation present in today's society. From the bustling streets of Squamish, BC, as reported by the Toronto Star, comes a heart-stopping narrative that could easily be mistaken for a scene from a high-stakes drama. A baby, snugly secured in a stroller, became the unsuspecting participant in a terrifying ordeal. Struck by a vehicle, the stroller, with the baby inside, was dragged for an astonishing two blocks. The driver, in a shocking act of negligence, fled the scene, leaving onlookers in disbelief. Miraculously, the baby survived this harrowing incident, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. Found two blocks away with the baby still lodged in the front of the vehicle, the driver was arrested, marking a small step towards justice. Both the pedestrian and the baby sustained non-life-threatening injuries, a fact that, under the circumstances, seems nothing short of miraculous. The investigation continues, with authorities seeking any additional evidence that could shed light on the shocking event. On a different note, highlighting innovation and forward thinking, Nikkei Asia brings us news from the corporate world that sparks hope for a greener future. Japan's NIDAC, a leading motormaker, has projected a record-breaking profit, signaling a robust recovery in the EV parts sector. The company forecasts a 32% rise in its consolidated net profit, reaching 165 billion yen, $1.06 billion, by the year ending March 2025. This optimistic outlook is underpinned by strategic adjustments, including scaling down its EV parts operations in China and pivoting towards the burgeoning demand for industrial motors in the US. 
NIDEC's commitment to innovation is further demonstrated by its plan to release a third-generation e-axle this summer, a move expected to significantly boost profitability. With an ambitious goal to sell 10 million e-axles by FI 2030, NIDEC is positioning itself as a key player in the transition towards more sustainable transportation solutions. These two stories, though vastly different in their nature, underscore the multifaceted nature of our contemporary world. On one hand, we witness the fragility of life through a near-tragic event in Squamish, BC, a reminder of the unpredictability that pervades our daily existence. On the other hand, we see a glimpse of the future through NIDEC's pioneering efforts in the EV sector, a beacon of hope for environmental sustainability and technological advancement. Together, these narratives invite us to reflect on the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead, encouraging us to navigate the complexities of the modern world with resilience, innovation, and a steadfast commitment to making a positive impact. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 do brief via email.